and welcome to this video on the relationship between arrays and pointers. In C, this relationship is very strong. In fact, any operation that can be achieved by indexing, which is specifying an element of an array using square brackets, can also be done with pointers. This is handy to know for a few reasons. First, many students like to know about what's going on at the low level, or what's under the hood when they program. Second, this knowledge is sometimes used by advanced C programmers who are trying to eke every little performance gain that they can out of their code. Third, you should know how to read code that uses pointers to access arrays. And as an added bonus, if the bracket keys ever broke on your keyboard, you'd still be able to write array code. Let's start by looking at an array. This line of code defines an integer array of size 10. The array is just a block of 10 integers stored consecutively in memory and named a sub 0, a sub 1, and so on up through a sub 9. Each element in the array is accessed by using the notation a sub i, where i is the index of the corresponding element. One thing that's really important to know is that an array variable is actually a pointer to the start of the array. In other words, a stores the address of its first element. However, arrays are a special type of pointer in that they are constant. They can't be reassigned to point somewhere else. So while you can change the elements of A, you can't change A itself, hence the thick green arrow here. It always has to point to the first element. An analogy that you may have heard before is that an array is like an egg carton, and the elements are like the eggs inside. You can change the eggs, but not the carton. Now, if you're thinking that you could change the carton, maybe a better analogy for you would be that the array is like one of those refrigerators with built-in dimples to hold the individual eggs in it. Now, the refrigerator can't be moved. Well, I suppose it could with lots of effort, so the analogy still isn't perfect, but I hope you get the point. Now, while you can't move the array pointer itself because it's constant, you can still declare another pointer, which can be changed to refer to the array. This next line declares PA to be a pointer to an integer that sits somewhere in memory. PA gets the address of A sub 0, sets PA to point to element 0 in the array. Using the fact that an array's name is the address of its first element, we could also just write PA gets A. The pointer now gives us another way to access the array's data. Remember that if you dereference a pointer, you get what it points to. So star PA is just element A sub 0, the data that's stored there. But that's not all. Since the elements of an array are stored right next to each other in memory, we can calculate the address of the next element in the array very easily. It's just the address of the first element plus the size of one integer. The designers of C made this address even easier to express. We can use the expression PA plus 1. The 1 works because PA is a pointer to an integer, and we're moving ahead by the size of one integer. Now it works for other types as well. If we had an array of doubles, which are twice as big on many systems, and a pointer to a double, then PA plus 1 would give the address of the next double in that array. Or what if we had an array of structs, where the size of the struct can be even bigger, depending on what it was declared to hold, and we had a pointer to a struct. In that case, PA plus 1 would give the address of the next struct in the array. This ability to just use the integer 1 to move ahead in memory by the size of whatever data type being used is called pointer arithmetic. Now, Using pointer arithmetic, PA plus 9 is the address of that last element way down in the array. Another way of writing this is that PA plus 1 is the same as the address of A sub 1, or in general, PA plus I is the same as the address of A sub I for any index I. Now, how do we get the data stored there? Well, we just dereference the pointer. So star parentheses PA plus 1 is the second element of the array. It's the same as A sub 1. Now, looking at the picture, you see that star sub A plus 1 would also work. And that's actually what A sub I means. From the start of the array, you add to move forward I ints in memory, and then you dereference. So it's one addition and one dereference to do array subscripting. Now, by updating the pointer by the appropriate amount, we can move around in the array. And it's actually slightly more efficient to traverse an array by doing this 
than by using array subscripts, as we'll soon see. So for instance, PA++ will move the pointer to the next element. For instance, you can imagine writing that inside a for loop to move through the entire array. As another example, PA++ equals 4 will move it 4 integers further. Now remember, I need to declare the separate pointer PA because I can't change where A itself points. The relationship between arrays and pointers carries over into parameter passing. Here's the syntax for passing an array to a function. The pointer syntax could also be used to pass an array to a function as well. int with the brackets and int star are almost equivalent. In particular, first of all you'll note that in both cases A doesn't store its size. It must be passed around as a separate parameter. Second, in either case we can still use array subscripts. Third, both can access and change the elements of A. But there is one very subtle difference. Only G can mutate the parameter A. With array syntax, you can't change A to walk through the array, so you need a separate pointer. Remember, array pointers are constant. But if you actually pass A in as a pointer, then you could in that case actually change A itself within the function by using pointer arithmetic to traverse the array. Not a huge deal, but that's that tiny little case, kind of like moving the refrigerator. In an earlier video from this session, we wrote a program to read exam scores from a user. This program also had a print array function. Let's go back to the arrays project and modify print array so that it uses pointers instead of array indexing to walk through the array. I have the arrays project open and I'm in main. I'm going to go down to, um, to the main function here and I'm going to comment out read scores and just hard code some array scores in here just to make our testing a little bit faster. So I'll put in, put in a few scores here and should run just fine. So it does, it prints out our scores. A um, couple things, I'm going to go up to print array and we will use the array syntax to show you that that works. All right, so just fine. So we've declared here a as a pointer to int. We're still using array syntax to print things out. Now you remember that array subscripting uses using the square brackets involves moving ahead by A and then dereferencing the pointer. So dereferencing the pointer. So two operations there. What I'd like to do is instead of using A sub I, we'd like to just dereference which means we're going to have to move our pointer. So what I'd like you to do, pause the video, take a minute and think about how you would change your for loop so that you could just dereference a pointer here. Okay, I'll assume that you've done that. First, hopefully you declared p to be a pointer, so type pointer to int. Second, I hope you updated your for loop, so p doesn't start at zero, but where does a pointer start? Well, it should start at the first element, pointing to array sub zero, so you could use address of a sub zero or just a itself as a shorthand. Second, we have to know where it ends. So p is going to continue as long as it is less than a plus the end of the array, a plus size. If you wanted to calculate that just once, you could say create another variable called end that's equal to a plus size, and then you could just have p less than end. And finally, you need to advance your pointer by one element every time you go through the for loop. And that's probably the easiest part, because we can just write p++, and that'll move it ahead. Right. Let's check this out. And as we suspected, it works just fine, and we've traversed our whole array and printed it by just updating the pointer and not by using array subscripting. Let's summarize. First, pointer arithmetic allows us to easily write expressions for the addresses of elements in an array based on the address of the first element. Second, we use pointer arithmetic and then dereferencing to write alternatives to subscripts for accessing array elements. Remember, just in case the bracket keys in our keyboard broke. Finally, we wrote code that used a pointer to walk through an array, and we created optimized code that executes slightly faster. However, you should know that any good compiler today can handle these optimizations for you, so that just using array brackets will be just as fast as using pointers. And since array notation is simpler, it can allow you to devote your whole brain to solving the problem at hand, instead of focusing on syntax. There are more hard problems around to solve than we'll ever have time to tackle, 
So this is a very good thing. Until next time, I'm Matt. See you later.